Hi everyone, my name is Matthew Moser. I'm a software engineer over here at Itemist, and today I'm going to be walking you through ways in which you can organize your projects within Secure. This is going to be very helpful, especially if you're looking to create different libraries to reuse across multiple different Tara projects, or if you just have a variety of different uh, component layers that you want to be able to abstract in and out of your project and be able to view them in a way that's a bit less cluttered than if you were to just go ahead and create nodes. So without further ado, I'll just go ahead and take us into the tool. Uh, the project that we have here is just a project that I created uh, just now uh, for the sake of this demonstration. It is using the ISO 21434 um, solution that we have baked into the tool itself. Um, but it is important to note that everything that I'm going to be showing you today can be used with any type of um, solution that you're looking for. So whether you've made heavy modifications to the ISO 21434 or you've even gone as far as to create your own standard for which you're completing your Tara, everything that's here is still relevant to uh, the, those particular projects. So what we can see here, and I made the, main, uh, uh, the, um, the project window here larger for the sake of demonstration, we can see that within our item definition, there are these uh, circular um, areas, and these are essentially called nodes within the program. So what we can do is we can actually create multiple versions of these nodes, and we can use them as a way to sort of segment or better uh, separate relevant uh, content. So what we're going to do here is we're going to have two component nodes. We're going to have one for onboard and one for offboard, and this is just how we're going to be able to keep these two separate and uh, we can then even be able to export them out of the tool and have only those relevant information within it. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and name this one onboard. And now we need a new section for components for the offboard. So what we're going to do, we're going to right click on the item definition, go over to new routes. And here we're going to see a variety of different options. Typically, when you're working within the tool, Every option but this com morad is something that you'll want to use. The com morad is something that's much more for actual development. And if you're really far deeper into the tool um, than the average user, in fact, I would say this is for power users exclusively, everything else here is intended for regular users. We're going to drop in what's called a system chunk. This is a blank uh, node within the tool and we can then provide what information it's going to store. So within here, I can select a component because we want to make this a component-based system chunk, and I can do so by either using control space and selecting from the options here or by pushing one of the buttons that are present here. We can see within our project window that the uh, circle that represents what is being stored within this has changed to a C. Uh, so we know that it is now a component node, and I can go ahead and provide a name for this. Components offboard. Uh, so now we have two different component sections within the tool. Uh, this can be seen within our system diagram. And I'll go ahead and, uh, or actually, let me provide something for our onboard just so it has something to pull into the tool itself. New component two. Go to system diagram, preset the layout, and we can go ahead and actually decide what our root component is. If we're using system, it means that the uh, foundation or that very root layer of it is going to be from this onboard section. And if it's going to be from new component one, that's going to be from the components offboard. And I'm going to go ahead and add a child component. Oh, excuse me. I'm going to add a child component here just to demonstrate. Uh, child of offboard. We'll move back over to this. I'll go ahead and uh, move this information up into. Okay, let me go ahead and just create a new component here. And this will be child of onboard. Going back over to our system diagram once again, we can see here that with the root uh, component being new component one, we could see the child of the offboard. And going back over to the system, we could see the child of the onboard. So this is a way that you can keep separate uh, diagrams as well within the tool if you're looking to uh, provide that within a single solution. Typically, I would recommend having two solutions if you're going to be doing something like this um, in this particular example. But what's important to take out of this is that we can have multiple sets of uh, components 
or really anything that can be found within the tool uh, within a single project and that information can be accessed by other uh, facets. To further demonstrate that, let's go over to our asset identification assistant by selecting refresh here. We can see that all of the components that are found within our model are being presented here as something that uh, is potentially demanding of our CIA triad. So it doesn't matter if the components are uh, in separate uh, nodes that we can see here, it's all gonna be pulled into the model and uh, be used throughout the entire, uh, throughout its entirety. Additionally, uh, another way to demonstrate this is within our damage scenarios, we can go ahead and provide a uh, new damage scenario here for concerns, we'll just select availability. And then from this drop down, we can see that every single component that we have within our model is also available for selection. Additionally, if you're uh, particularly keen eyed, you'll be able to see that the uh, area in which it originates from is actually listed here as well. So we can see that this is coming from components offboard, whereas child of onboard is coming from components onboard. So it's very helpful in terms of letting the user know where this information is being pulled from, as well as just what information is fully available, because it will just take everything and present it as such. Now let's say that we have another uh, set of components within our system. We're gonna go ahead and go and create a new system chunk. We can have this and this will just be components general. We'll add a component here. And while this is fine that we can support as many different routes as possible, we can see here within our item definition uh, in the project explorer, what's happening is this area is becoming a little bit busy and we want to actually make this a bit more uh, easy to manage. So what we're going to do is we're actually going to create a folder within, inside this, uh, within this item definition to store these um, components and we'll have that be a single entity that can then be expanded rather than having a bunch of uh, separate routes placed throughout a project. So we'll select everything that we want. Um, if you're looking to highlight different elements that are present here, you can hold control and then left click and it will select one at a time for however many you click. Or if you're looking to uh, select everything that's here or select in a linear progression, uh, you can hold shift and then left click and it will take everything from your first point to the second point that you have. For this sample though, we're just gonna take the uh, components that are here, we're gonna right click and then we're gonna select virtual package. So what we're gonna see here is that we need to provide a name for this virtual package. Think of this just as a folder. Um, so don't try to think of it as anything else. It is a folder for all intents and purposes. However, the way that this is named is a little bit different. So what we can see here by uh, selecting this dropdown is assistance, checklist, uh, item definition, reports, and security analysis. And once you know it, by looking at our project explorer here, assistance, checklist, item definition, reports and security analysis. So if we simply wanted to move this from one folder to another, we could go ahead and just change uh, to what's present here, select OK, and then it would move over. And in fact, I could do so here, and it's now moved over into our checklist folder. And we can see that here. Uh, it doesn't matter where within the project it is located, the model is still going to recognize it as uh, relevant information because it is components. It doesn't matter where it is in the project, it pulls components so the asset identification will find it. But for the sake of our project, we wanna keep it within item definition. So we'll once again, select everything, pull it over to item definition, and then we wanna decide that there's a new folder. So in order to do this, we need to create a subfolder. Uh, this is done by simply assigning a period after the initial folder name, and then we can give a name for the new folder. Uh, we'll just label it components. And now we can see here within our uh, Project Explorer that a components folder has been created. We can select that and now we can see that there are all of our components found within here and they are all perfectly available to use. Additionally, uh, if we wanted to add a subfolder to a subfolder, and in fact I'll do this with just the general, uh, we could go ahead and see our directory here. So we have our item definition folder, then components, and then if we want to add one more, for this one particular node, we could go ahead and add another period and then add uh, whatever the name is for that folder that we want. In this case, I labeled it general and it can now be found here. Uh, the same way that you assign folders uh, in terms of going one layer deeper into your directories, 
you can do the same in reverse. So for this component general, I decided, okay, it doesn't really make sense to have its own folder for this. It can just be within the components folder. All that I need to do is remove the name here, remove the period as well, item definition.components. It's something that can already be found here if you're looking for uh, fast access as well. I'll hit OK, and now it's in the uh, same directory as the rest of the components. So this would be really helpful, especially when you're looking to import uh, different um, parts of projects together. You can actually be able to have uh, all of your components within their own folder and start creating that library of internal uh, information for you and your company. Additionally, this can occur with every single facet of our project. So looking at reports, uh, one thing that's very helpful to have is a couple of different uh, default report options. Maybe you have um, two auditing teams that you need to provide this information to, and we, they have uh, their own formats for this. So I'll go ahead and select audit team A as the name here. I can go ahead and create a new route here. This will be found under, oh, where does it go? Yeah, general uh, result report. A new node has been created and I can uh, provide it the name for how it will show within our um, project window. I can then change the information that's being presented here in any way that I see fit. And regardless of the changes that I make to the model, whenever I'm ready to create the report, the format's already saved and I can go ahead and open it as a Word or a PDF document. That covers everything within the tool for the sake of this uh, video. I hope that you learned something useful and if you have any questions, feel free to leave a comment or reach out to us via email and we'll be sure to get back to you as soon as possible. Thank you and have a nice day.